Thank God for his grace and his mercy. Amen. Because if we really be honest with ourselves, thank God he didn't give us what we truly deserve. Amen. So we ought to appreciate what God has given to us and use this life that he has blessed us with, Amen. not for our selfish gain, but unto him that died and rose again. I'm reminded of 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 at verse number 15. For he died for all. That they that live should henceforth not live unto themselves, but unto him that died and rose again. Yeah. I didn't die for you, and you didn't die for yourself. Yeah. Christ died for us all, that we may have life, as the scripture says over in John chapter 10, and in verse number 9 through 10, I am the door, and if anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and will go in and go out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have life more abundantly. If it wasn't for Jesus Christ dying on the cross for the remission of our sin, our praises says when you be what we are, it wouldn't be who we are. So I don't understand how somebody can get out their bed in the morning and go and wash their ugly face and go about their various lives doing what they want to do and neglect to just say, Lord, thank you for one more day. We're here because he has blessed us to be here. Not because we choose to be here and not because we have done so good on this side of life. He's blessed us because of who Christ is and how he dwells in us. Amen. Amen. With that being said, I don't know about you, but I'm happy. Amen. And I'm truly grateful. I'm reminded of what the psalmist said. I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. Even on Wednesday, I'm glad they said unto me, come and let us go into the house of the Lord. Hey, we could have been somewhere else doing something else. We could have been in the hospitals, laying in our grave. But thank God we found fit to be here on tonight. Amen. With that being said, I hope you're glad too. Amen. I'm truly honest. Amen. To receive the invitation that has been given to me. Mm -hmm. To come before you to bring to you another portion of God's holy and divine word. Yes, the same word that is able to keep your soul saved. And the same word that is able to save a soul. Mm -hmm. If you are here and you're not a member of the Church of Christ, I want you to know here at the Church of Christ uh, in Warren, Arkansas, we believe where the Bible speaks, we speak. Yes. Mm -hmm. And where the Bible is silent, we go outside. Mm -hmm. We believe in a New Testament teaching regarding what someone must do in order to be saved. Mm -hmm. It is by the hearing, the believing, uh, the repenting, the confessing, and being baptized for the remission of your sin. Mm -hmm. It's according to the New Testament teaching, not the old, but the New Testament mm -hmm. teaching regarding the gospel of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. the death, burial, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I've been charged to preach nothing but that gospel. Mm -hmm. It is written in Galatians chapter 1 at verse number 8. But if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel that I have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Therefore, I is written over in Romans chapter 1 at verse 15. As much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel unto you, to those that are wrong also. Therefore, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power unto salvation unto the Jews first and also to the Greeks. However, it's 
but you must believe that same gospel in order to be saved. Amen. Amen. Therefore, I'm truly blessed once more to be in your midst. Yes. One more time. If you have your Bibles, I won't tarry long because I got some ground to cover. If you have your Bibles, I pray that you do. And uh, uh, if you're a Christian and don't have your Bible, then shame on you. Uh, I just want to go ahead and just let you know why it's so important that we have our Bibles. We must understand, and some of you and those of you that are visiting with us, uh, you probably have the perception, well, normally when I go somewhere, I just like to sit and look at the preacher, see uh, what kind of suit he got on, how he sounds, and just make sure he's saying the right thing. Or, therefore, it is written at Acts chapter number 17 and verse number 11. It says, these were more noble than those of Thessalonica, that they received the word without readiness of mind, and they searched the scriptures daily and said, whether those things are so. Well, preacher, what in the world am I'm searching for. For it is written in the Gospel of John, chapter number 5 at verse number 39. For you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and they are they who testify for me. Amen. So therefore, preacher, once I get through searching the scripture, what must I do then? For it is written in Isaiah chapter number 34 at verse number 16. You search from the book of the Lord and you read. Therefore, you search for eternal life and the Lord. That's why you need your Bibles on tonight. You listen to me, don't pay. It may not get you where you're trying to go, but I can assure you if you apply God's word, you'll get to where you need to be. So let's search the scriptures. And then we think we have eternal life. The Bible reads so in 1 Corinthians. Now the preacher said, I can. I can, I can, I can, I can, I can preach down here. Or I can preach up there. Right, right. So I'm going to be diverse tonight. I may preach up here, and then I may preach down here. But the fact that I'm going to The scripture that has been given to me is 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. Beginning at verse number 1. 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. Turn your pages. Turn, turn in your Bible. If you need a Bible, just raise your hand. Right now. And one of the brothers will assist you in receiving God's holy and divine word. It's good to see everybody that is out tonight. It's just good to see all the smiley faces. And there was one sister, I believe, and she's a sister here. She was here uh, I, before anybody was here. I love to see that. Uh, I, if, I believe it was, if it was not saying you were sitting here before anybody was here. And that's just a blessing. That shows your commitment. Uh, don't, don't worry about who's not here tonight. Don't look over on the other side of the room. Brother, you take up that whole room over there. It's all right. We got one or two people over there. But thank God that we're here tonight. I, I, my preacher told me, my mentor told me, he said, look, don't worry about the people. It, it just, it, it just worry about those who show up. First uh, Corinthians chapter 6. Get it in verse number one. It says, Dare any of you having a nap? It. it could be an alt, a problem, a situation mm -hmm. against another. Mm -hmm. Go to the law before the unrighteous mm -hmm. and not before the saints. Mm -hmm. Do you not know that the saints will judge this sinful world? Mm -hmm. And if the world be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life, if then you have judgments concerning things pertaining to this life? Do you appoint those who are least esteemed by the church to judge? An unjust court. An unjust court. Mm -hmm. Paul was an apostle of Jesus Christ. He was a man who was converted from and by the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. His sins was washed away by the blood of Jesus through an obedient faith. Paul's carnal mind was renewed from sinner to saint. Amen. Paul expressed his heartfelt gratitude and thanksworthiness to his young son in the gospel. Come with me to 1 Timothy chapter 1 at verse 12 through 16. Paul said, I thank Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful and put me into the ministry. Although I was formerly 
a blasphemy. And listen to the word formally. Yes. We, we don't need to ever say still or present. Formerly, who we used to be, Amen. putting me into the ministry. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, mm -hmm. a prosecutor, yes. an insolent man, but I obtained mercy. Mm -hmm. I did it ignorantly and unbelief. Yes. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant yes. with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Listen to Paul's gratitude. And this is a faithful sin and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners and who I am well chief. However, for this reason I obtain mercy that in me first that Christ may show all long suffering, listen to this, as a pattern to those who are going to believe. Let me just let you know this. When you obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, your life needs to become a pattern to those that are watching. Amen. You don't never need to become a Christian and still doing the very hard things that you were delivered from before you obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. When you become a Christian, a faithful Christian in the Lord, your life needs to be a pattern. Listen to what Paul said to those who are going to believe. That means they have not already believed, but they're watching you to see just how Christian you are, to, to see just how faithful you are in the Lord. If you're showing up for Sunday morning Bible class, that means you are discouraging somebody who may want to come to Sunday morning Bible class. If you're not here on Wednesday night or uh, participating in any type of function, that means you are discouraging Amen. those that may be seeking to obey the gospel because the pattern they have is you. They can't go back and watch Jesus. Amen. Jesus has already descended. The pattern Amen. that Jesus left is us that who obey the gospel Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Therefore, Paul strived to create a good pattern to the believers in Corinth by writing to them to imitate him as a faithful Christian. Listen to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 4. At verse 14 to 16. First Corinthians chapter number 4 at verse 14 through 16. It says, I do not write these things to shame you. But as in my beloved children, I warn you. See, listen to this. Paul is encouraging the church at Corinth. The church at Corinth had many problems. And let me tell you something. The church today got many problems as well. There was division when you start out at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 all the way to our scripture. Read, you find where Paul had to repeatedly uh, 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 have to uh, uh, address the matter of division and confusion in the body of Christ. Anytime you start to leave the word of God, you're going to have strife and division in the church. Amen. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning at verse 14 through 16, at verse 15, he says, For though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you or encourage you to imitate me. If you're going to imitate anybody, you need to imitate a Christian. Amen. That's why it's so important that we teach our young folks. Right. Jay-Z can't save your soul. Amen. Nicki Minaj or Cardi B. And you find young people mimicking those that are of the world Amen. instead of those that are Christian. Because when they lay eyes on Christian, they see the, the dysfunctionality of the spirituality of a Christian. They see the lack of uh, support and positive support in a Christian. Amen. They see how nasty your attitude is towards Amen. another Christian. Amen. They see how you show up uh, for functions and you don't really support because you're there in a, with the wrong motive and intention. All Christians see that. And when you go out to try to minister to those, the first thing they say is the same thing that Jesus called those that's over in uh, Matthew. You hypocrite mm -hmm. yes. concerning your life as a Christian. Amen. Amen. Paul said, mm -hmm. I have it mm -hmm. that you should imitate me. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Christian. I am Christian, I ain't start preaching yet now. I just, uh, I'm just building my case. Keep in mind the top of my court. I'm building my seed. When you go to court, the lawyer or the defense attorney, he has to build his case to the truth. He has to make you know, uh, 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 evidence of the fact of why we are gathered here today and what the reason is that we are bringing forth a case before the judge. Amen. However, Christians at the Corinth church resisted just as Christians of the Lord's church today. Amen. The Corinthians were guilty of division and contention, which to say they consistently created jealousy and strife among themselves. 
The Corinthians were strong-minded but weak in spirit. Yes. They warred and struggled within themselves, not according to the hearing and receiving of the word of God that Paul wrote and expressed to them. They warred and struggled with the application of the word of God, just as many Christians today. Yes. Come with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, beginning at verse 1 through 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, beginning at verse number 1 says, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babe in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you are not able to still receive it. The reason why we got so many bench warmers in the church is because when they obeyed the gospel some 10 and 5 and 20 years ago, they couldn't digest solid food then and they still can't digest solid food now. Some of us are still sucking on milk because we have not yet learned how to apply the word of God to our lives. Amen. Therefore, Paul was expressing to these stiff-necked babes in Christ, these elementary acting, these premature thinking, these bottled milk drinking and pacify sucking Christians in the church of Corinth. The reason why you can't get along with each other, the reason there is so much division among you is because you are immature Christians and acting like you're men instead of men of God. Amen. So now we come to our scripture text. I had to get there now. I know I was rushing, but I got I had to, I had to build my case. First Corinthians chapter 6, beginning at verse number 1. Paul said, Dare any of you having a matter against another, go to the law before the unrighteous and not before the saints. It is safe to say that many of the Corinthian brethren were habitually taking other brethren in the church through the legal process of a trial before non-Christian judges for the purpose of defrauding them mm -hmm. to obtain selfish and worldly gain. The word dare comes from the Greek word tomelo. Can I help you out on tonight? Tomelo is spelled T-O. L-M-A-O. Tomato means to undertake, to, uh, 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 to have the courage, to even have the cruelty to do a thing in spite of any natural feeling or remorse or for one's action or risk taking towards a thing. Paul started out by saying, I dare any of you. What he was saying is, how in the world can you denounce your Christianity? How in the world can you reject the authority of God? How in the world can you reject that you have believed? How in the world can you reject the blood wash, uh, the baptism of Jesus Christ and start doing things that are not authorized? Amen. He said, how dare any of you do this thing? You ever played true for dad when you was a child? Don't, don't, don't joke with me now. Some of you played. Some of you probably got scratches and marks on your neck if you don't play true for dad. See, when you play true for dad, there is no limitation to the rules. That means you won't do something and don't care how anybody feel about it. Because you don't want to feel like that you are going to be uh, looked down upon if you don't do it. Hmm. True for dare means is that I, I dare you, uh, Brother Robinson, uh, to run across that street as fast as you can with blindfolded. I may be crazy enough to do it. I may be crazy enough not to do it. But the fact of the matter is, is what state of mind I'm in for me to do something like this that has no authorization required to do something that would affect myself or affect somebody else. Because if I get hit by a car, something going, uh, it's going to not only affect me physically, but it's also going to affect my family. And what Paul was saying to the church of Corinth, when you take your brother to court, not only do it affect you as a Christian, but it brings open shame to the church. Amen. Yes. That's why we got so much chaos in the church because Christians don't become mindful of the things they do to one another. Amen. And it puts the church to open shame. Amen. The Bible says, there any of you having a matter against another, go to the law before the unrighteous and not before the saints. Therefore, these particular brothers were obeying the laws of the land 
before the unrighteous man and rejecting the obedience of God. It is written in Acts chapter number 5 and verse number 29. Peter and the rest of the apostles, they said, I, we, we, we will obey God and rather obey man. In other words, we got to understand something. Just because a mankind may seem, say that it's right, just because it may feel good and may, it may, may uh, make us feel like it's right, when you ask God and you ask God according to his word, in what I'm doing, is it right before God's eyes? Amen. Sorry, Amen. That's it. And if your question is no, mm. I encourage you not to do it. Amen. Amen. These crazy brethren was not willing to obey God regarding having a matter of fault against another Christian. Mm. God's word don't te teach us to go before sinners to have our matter. Amen. In Matthew chapter 22 and verse 29, Jesus answered and said unto him, You are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. What he See, many people are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures. They error, not knowing the power of God. We must understand that in order for us to resolve a matter between one another, it takes forgiveness. Yes. It is written in Matthew chapter 6 at verse number 14. For if you forgive men of their trespasses, yes. your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men of their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you of your trespasses. How many times should we forgive our brother, brother preacher? Matthew chapter 18 and verse 21 to 22. It says, Then Peter came to them and said, Lord, how many how many times should we forgive our brother if he sins against me? How many times should I forgive him? Jesus said, up, uh, he said up to seven times. Jesus said unto him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. Paul said, uh, how, how dare any of you have an oath against one another? In other words, how in the world can you bypass what Jesus said and go before an unrighteous man who gonna judge you? Judge Mathis can't help you. Judge Judy can't help you. Judge Tyler can't help you. The only one you need to worry about standing in front of on the day of judgment is Christ Jesus. Amen. The Corinthians had got beside themselves. Amen. They started having problems with one another. And the principle of this is, is that the church shouldn't do anything that it's not authorized to do. Amen. The church shouldn't do anything that's going to bring shame upon the church. Amen. And a lot of times we bring shame upon the body of Christ by the things we do out there, mm -hmm. it will affect in here. Amen. Amen. I don't know where we get it from. Mm -hmm. As long as uh, uh, they don't see me do it, I'm all right. <laughs> that's a lie. Amen. There's a song that said, uh, what I don't know won't hurt me. That's a lie. Amen. What I don't know will hurt me. Because if I don't know that you're a member right here at Central uh, Church of Christ in Warren, Arkansas, and you out there on the street corner drinking and lying and carrying on and doing things that you shouldn't have to do, and somebody, I run into somebody to teach them a Bible class, and the first thing they say is that brother there that's a member there do, does this and that. No, I don't want to go there. It affects the church. Yes, it, it affects the preacher. Yes, sir. It affects the eldership. Yes, sir. And then you get mad when uh, the elders sit you down and talk to you. Mercy. You want to jump membership. Mercy. That's right. That's what do. <coughs> if we're not authorized, Amen, man. we shouldn't do it. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 2. I can start preaching now. <laughs> Oh, Do you God. not know that the saints will judge the world? Yes. And if the world be judged by you, mm -hmm. are you unworthy to judge the smallest man? Mm -hmm. Paul's form of expression was to bring mind important truth, which is his readers knew, but they disregarded. Mm -hmm. Paul brought up the old, an Old Testament principle that Moses commanded God's people regarding how God's chosen people must judge among themselves and not pursue judgment from an unjust court. God would mean to Deuteronomy chapter number 1, beginning at verse number 16 through 18. Deuteronomy chapter 1 at verse 16 through 18. The Bible says, Then I command you judges at that time, saying, Hear the cases between your brothers. First of all, we need to learn how to listen. Amen. Before you go to taking somebody to court, before you put your mouth on somebody, before you persecute somebody, before you mistreat somebody, before you mishandle somebody, listen to the case. Listen to what's going on. 
Yes. Our problem as Christians, can I talk to us? Yes. Our problem as Christians is we don't like to listen. Amen. We refuse to hear the word of God that's being preached every uh, first day of the week. Not alone we want to hear what somebody else got to say concerning what's right. If we learn to just listen, you remind me of the scripture that says Romans 10, uh, verse number 17. So then faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The only way you know anything, the only way you can believe anything, unless you have something to listen to. But you gotta first be willing to listen. Amen. Amen. The Bible says. But then I command you judges at the time saying, hear the cases between your brother. Mm -hmm. See, Paul was teaching them how to reconcile their differences right. without going to the court of the unjust. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 1, he says, and judge righteously between a man and his brother or stranger who is with him. You should not show partiality in judgment. You should hear the small as well as the great. Amen. Some of us like to have partiality. Mm -hmm. If it ain't juicy or good news, we don't want to hear. No. Some of us just want to hear the gospel, the backdrop of what they say. When they do that, girl, he hit your car and then he didn't pay for it. Mm -hmm. Oh, your brother, he owed you some money. You borrowed some money from church. You paid for it. How much did he borrow? It don't matter how much he borrowed. Mm -hmm. If the brother is in a position that he needs some help, don't worry about what he didn't do. Yes. We need to be concerned about his position as a Christian. Because what we don't want to do is neglect our responsibility to help our brothers and sisters because it will bring forth open shame to the church. Amen. Amen. It's sad to say, but it's in the church. Yes, the Bible says, you should not be afraid of any man's presence. For the judgment is God's. First of all, we need to understand Paul was teaching them that the judgment is God. See, when Paul brought up this principle in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2, he said, do you not know the saints will judge the world? And so in Deuteronomy chapter 1, we're dealing with the principle. That's why in Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 16 and 18, the Bible says that you should not show partiality in judgment. You shall hear the small as well as the great. You should not be afraid in any man's presence, for the judgment is God. The case that is too hard for you, Bring it to me. In our case as Christians, we need to bring it to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Bring it to God. Yes. Or bring it to somebody that's godly. Yes. Bring it to somebody that's spiritual. Amen. It's sad to say. It's sad to say. Sad to say. I told Lewis Creed. It said we need to, we got to do that whatever goes on here stays here. Amen. Amen. If we got a problem with one another, brother Shell, it should be heard throughout the brotherhood before it come back to you. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Amen. We need to learn how to just sit down and reason together. Amen. How to judge the matter righteously. And the only way you can judge a, right, a matter righteously is by the word of God. Amen. That's it. The Bible says in verse 18, it says, And I command you, at, th at that time, all things which you should do. He was teaching Concerning a New Testament principle, what the scriptures is teaching us is a mandate principle that our judgment or our righteousness judgment should be according to the word of God and his will. We should never get beside ourselves and begin to act as if we're interim judges instead of God. James wrote up in James chapter 4, beginning at verse number 11 through 12. James chapter 4, beginning at verse 11 through 12. It says, do not speak evil one another. Mm -hmm. Brother, he who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is only one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy. Who are you to judge another? Paul is saying, do you not know that you're going to judge the world? But you can't even judge the smallest matter. You can't even judge the most righteous matter. Therefore, you need to understand when you speak evil towards one another, who are you to judge? Mm -hmm. See, when you do things outside of the will of God, what happens is you get beside yourself and you begin to try to take God's place Amen. and start trying to make folks pay for something. Yeah. That's why I read to you over in Matthew chapter number 6 mm -hmm. and verse number 14 that you got to go before God and ask him to forgive your trespasses just like I got to go before him and forgive mine. And if I'm not willing to forgive you or yours, then how in the world God is going to forgive me or mine? Amen. 
We got to stay in our land. Amen. We stay in our place. Yes. Mm -hmm. Paul was encouraging them. As Christians, we should never formulate a judgmental mindset and attitude because we begin to judge against the truth mm -hmm. instead of by the truth mm -hmm. of God. For it is written in Romans chapter 2, at verse 1 through 2. I want to apologize for giving you so many scriptures. That's the only way you're going to learn in this thing. It's by the word of God. Romans chapter 2, beginning at verse 1 through 2. Therefore, Paul had this same. Listen to this. Paul dealt with this same similar issue at the church in Rome. The Jews had gotten beside themselves uh -huh. and had become judgmental towards the Gentiles. Uh -huh. They thought just because they had been converted by the gospel of Jesus Christ, that they still, because they were God's chosen people according to the New Testament, they refused to believe that there was under the, the new dispensation, that they had a right to still look down on the Gentiles and believe, believe it or not, we still have that same attitude in the church of Christ. Amen. Listen to what Paul said in Romans chapter 2. Verse 1 through 2. We're talking about an unjust court. Yes. The Bible says, therefore, you are inexcusable on O oh man, mm -hmm. whoever you are who judge. Mm -hmm. For whatever, what in, whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. Mm -hmm. For you who judge practice the same thing. Believe it or not, folks who are always talking about what somebody else doing, Amen. they're doing the same thing. Amen. Well, I'm not a liar. You still said it. Amen. I don't drink. You probably smoke. <laughs> what he's talking about, and when he said you still do the same thing, it's talking about your sin. I'm reminded of Romans chapter 3 and verse number 23. For we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I am in no state to talk about this brother by no means based upon what he do. I am in a spiritual state to try to help him while Amen. I help myself. Amen. Because when I judge him, I'm condemning me. Amen. I take the place of the judge and God, Jesus, is the ultimate judge. But when I do it according to the word of God, uh -huh. I can judge righteously. Yes. And that's what, what Paul was teaching the church right. at Corinth. Right. You need to learn how to judge matters righteously. Yes. That's why it's important that we instill this in our young people to make better decisions. But the reason why they're not making better decisions because we're not teaching them or instilling in them the word of God Amen. so they can learn good from evil and right from wrong and who to fool with and not to fool with, who to date and not to date, who to marry and not to marry. That's the only way you can judge righteously. Amen. It's by the word of God. Amen. But if I'm judging you, I condemn myself. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, at verse number 2, it says, Do you not know the saints will judge the world? Mm -hmm. See, we judge the world according to the truth. Yes. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. We will judge the world because uh, when, we, when we became a Christian, we became joint heirs with Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. We became a royal priesthood. Mm -hmm. We became, had the, the same dispensation to be able to judge those things according to his word. Mm -hmm. That's why we should be, that's why Paul said, I am ready and set for the defense of the gospel. Amen. Therefore, anybody that tells us something that's contrary to the word of God or try to teach us something, we can judge them based upon the word of God. Amen. We have a right to say that's not right. right. We have a right to say that's not true. That's right. We have a right to say that's not according to scripture. Right. Therefore, we must understand that in order for Christians who are faithful members of the Church of Christ, we must have the truth. During that time, Christ came into this sinful and perverse world. He was coming to save the world and not judge it. Come with me to Matthew chapter number 18 at verse number 47. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter number 18 at verse number 47. Rochelle, then let me know about my time. I go all to midnight like Paul. <laughs> Matthew chapter number 18 and verse number 47. It says, if anyone hears my word and do not believe, I, listen to this, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me does not receive my word, has the same which judge him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. The very thing that I speak concerning God's word will judge that person in the last day. Amen. 
And when you stand in an unjust court, you leave yourself vulnerable and open to, uh, for a man to judge you, and you're the one supposed to be judging the unrighteous. Yes. That's why I wish I was present in attendance when they swore Trump in. Because when you go before a any type of government official, I know we're recording this live stream, I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> what they make you do is this. They tell you, raise your right hand. Put your hand on the back. Mm -hmm. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth? So help you God. Yeah. And that sinner, that unbeliever, uh -huh. yeah. that person who's getting better to take a position, mm -hmm. will say, I do. Yeah. My question is, if they don't use the Bible, brother, yeah. why not open the book yes, and sir. find where you don't come up short somewhere? Mm -hmm. You're not fit to judge God's people. You're not in a position to judge God's people. He will see for himself. Anybody that is not a member of the Church of Christ, hold it right there. The saints shall judge the world and not me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Instead of swearing by the Bible, start opening the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I say, somebody needs to open the book in the White House yes, and see exactly what God will have for them to know. But before we can get to the White House, we got to get it right up in there. Amen. And that's what Paul was saying. How dare you judge your brother having an oath against him or having some type of discrepancy against him. Therefore, we are the saints of God through yes. Jesus Christ yes. who go before any judge in any unjust court to sue or file a suit against a brother mm -hmm. or a sister in the Lord's church when we all one day will stand before the true judge regarding our own individual matters and faults in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 beginning at verse number 9 through verse number 11 it says therefore we make it our aim whether it be present or absent, to be well pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in this body according to that which he has done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. And that's what Paul was doing, was persuading Christians. He, he's, he's persuading them to be mindful that we all are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. The time that you spend in sitting down talking to some legal advisor, mm -hmm. you can spend going to your brother. Amen. All right. The time that you spend spending your money going at trying to hire a lawyer, mm -hmm. that's the time you can spend reconciling with your brother. Amen. Amen. We waste too much time, mm -hmm. wasting time, yeah. wasting time, yeah. too much time yeah. going around doing it right instead of just doing it right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because when you do it right, God gonna bless you. Amen. Our problem is we want folks to pay. <laughs> that ain't good enough. Yes. Telling them ain't good enough. I want to see them suffer. <laughs> I need my little package back. I loaned that to them last year. Y'all know what package is, don't you? <laughs> some of you right now, somebody owe you a package. <laughs> to be honest, you may owe somebody a package. <laughs> We must understand the judgment of the unjust court cannot compare to the judgment of the justified saints. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 3 and 4, it says, Do you not know that we shall judge angels? Paul's form of expression was to bring mind important truth, which his readers knew, but they disregarded. The scriptures goes on to say how much more things that pertain to this life. If then you judge, if you have judgment concerning things pertaining to this life, do you appoint those who are least esteemed by you, by the church, to judge? Paul was saying to them, do you not know that we shall judge angels? Come with me to Jude, the book of Jude, verse 5 through 6. You can say chapter 1 or you can just say verse. Jude ain't got number 1. One, one epistle, Jude chapter, uh, chapter, uh, Jude chapter number one, or Jude verses five through six. Listen to this regarding the angels. The Bible said, but I want to remind you, though you once knew this, 
that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe, and the angels who did not keep their proper demand, but left their own abide, he reserved an everlasting change under darkness for the judgment of that great day. Over in 2 Peter chapter 2 at verse number 4, it says, For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell, and deliver them into the change of darkness, to be reserved for judgment. We need to understand something. And we are joint heirs with Christ. We too will judge those according to the word of God. Amen. See, our judgment should not be towards one another. Amen. We should be focusing on judging the word. Amen. Those that either refuse to obey or those who refuse to hear the word of God or those who are teaching false doctrine. Uh -huh. We should judge them. Not in the sense of damnation, but in the sense of trying to get them to see the yes. truth. Right. And let God do the judge. Yes. According to his word. Mm -hmm. God made Christ better than the angels, according to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, mm -hmm. who being the brightness of his glory and express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged sin, sat down at the right hand of the majesty of God, having become so much more than better, better than the angels, as he has by the inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. See, Jesus' name and his position, mm -hmm. who he was, was greater than any angel. Mm -hmm. And we're joint heirs with Christ. Mm -hmm. And we have been washed by the blood. And we obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. We too reign and reign with Christ Jesus. Am I right about it? Mm -hmm. Therefore, in my closing, we must come to understand who is able to judge among you. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 5 through 6. I say this to your shame. It is so that there is not a wise man among you, mm -hmm. not even one, who will be able to judge between his brother. The brother goes to the law against his brother. And that before the unbelievers. Paul rebuked these brothers yes. for their insubordination regarding taking one another to court. Uh -huh. Before man to seek righteousness, judgment. Paul Pryor had already informed them concerning the judgment uh -huh. as a Christian. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning at verse 1 through 5. It says, let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. See, first of all, before you start looking at somebody concerning Amen. their faults, make sure you live in faith. Amen. 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 A lot of times we like to bypass ourselves. Yes. That's why I'm glad it's written over in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 5. Examine yourself first. See, a Christian start to examine their self. When problems arise between a brother or another, we first must understand how we have to go to the Lord in repentance and prayer. We must understand the mercy that has been demonstrated towards us, the grace that we, that we have obtained through Jesus Christ before we are willing to convict and throw somebody in jail because of what they have done. Amen. Amen. We must understand over in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning at verse number 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning at verse number 2. It says, Moreover, it required us to us that one be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any, by any court here. Listen to this. He's talking about an unjust court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. Paul said, I don't even judge myself. Why, Paul? For I know nothing against myself. Yet I am not justified by this, but he who judges me is the Lord. Amen. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes. In other words, we should be worried about trying to judge nothing before the time. That time is when Jesus comes back. We all will be judged. Amen. Who will be both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsel of the hearts. See, while, while you exposing another brother by bringing him to court, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the scripture says, on the day of judgment, he's going to bring your, your mess out. Mm -hmm. The things that are in your heart. Mm -hmm. The things that you have done behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. yes. The things that you have done on your telephone. Yes. The things that you have even done through text messages. Mm -hmm. The things that you
you have done on Facebook, yeah. the things that you have done in your own family, the things that you have done in the church. See, everything that we do, whether it be good or evil, is going to be brought to judgment. Amen. Amen. And what Paul was telling, was teaching the church at Corinth, why are you so busy yes. exposing somebody else now mm -hmm. before unjust court? Mm -hmm. You need to be focused on what's going to come up at the end of the last day concerning you. Yes. Because we will be judged. Yes. Therefore, the scripture teaches us in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 8 through 10. I'm coming to a close. Do not go, do not go hastily to court. Proverbs 25, verse 8 through 10. It says, for what will you do in the end mm -hmm. when your neighbor has put you to shame? Did I just say that? Yes. When you go to court to put somebody in, uh -huh. you better be mighty careful. That's why you ever seen, I, I'll come to a close, I promise. You ever been watching a court series and the lawyer feel like he got, he got the prosecutor fixed. You know? mm -hmm. He got all his ducks in a row. And he get up there so bold and he read out his case and he give his evidence and all of a sudden he look across the table and he see the other guy doing this with his nose. And he get up there and say something that he was unaware of and puts the other guy in shame. In other words, what happened was is you need to be careful when you go to expose to somebody else concerning their matter that they may have something on you that they may put you to shame. Amen. Run around telling on somebody, brother so and so did, sister so and so, and the minute somebody said, Well, where you was the other night? Right. <laughs> and I saw him coming out the liquor store. <laughs> Put yourself to shame. <laughs> Balance say debate your cause with your neighbor. Mm -hmm. And do not disclose a secret to another. Mm. Lest he who hears it expose your shame and your reputation be ruined. Yeah. See, a Christian reputation don't need to be ruined. No. I'm closing that. No. No. Yes, sir, I'm closing. <laughs> I'm closing. A Christian reputation don't need to be ruined. Amen. That's why I started out by saying that Paul uh, was expressing his gratitude and was telling Timothy that you need to be a pattern because we got to be mindful of what Jesus did before the unjust court. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 53, it outlines how he was prosecuted in an unjust court. Yes. He was beaten in an unjust court. Yes. He was crucified for an unjust court. But thank God, thank God, thank God that he was justified. Amen. Justified by his obedience. Amen. That when he went to the cross, we don't have to go to an unjust court before a man. We don't have to suffer before the unrighteous. Because we have been bought with a price. Amen. We all have been redeemed. Those of us that have been obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you are not a member of the Church of Christ, if you are not a member of that blood brought institute, mm -hmm. you must understand the importance of hearing the word of God. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. Not only that, you got to believe that same word. Amen. According to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, without faith it's impossible to, to please him. But those that come to him uh, must believe that he is and he's water those that you see when you obey when you are ob obedience and you believe when you come to him he will reward you Amen. well how will he reward you when you when you confess your sins mm -hmm. and you repent and you confess that he, Jesus Christ is the son of the living God and you're willing to be buried with him in the water of great baptism the reward that you receive with the opportunity to have eternal life yes. and also receive a crown Amen. if you live a faithful life yes. yes we gotta be mindful that we don't have to take each other to court right it's not according to the scriptures. Right. I just scratched the surface. There's so much more I could I could bring out concerning this because we got to learn how to forgive. Mm -hmm. We got to learn how to put away our differences. Yeah. And the scripture says, anyway, if you have an offer between your brother, leave your gift and go and reconcile yeah. with your brother, yeah. and then come back. Are we doing it as Christians? Mm -hmm. Are we willing to leave our gift to go back and reconcile and say I'm sorry or say forgive me? Are we so quick to go to an unjust court? Because the minute you go to that unjust court. Keep in mind, it's going to be documented in the book. Yes. And you will have to give an account on the day of judgment. Yes. If you are here and you are not a member of the body of Christ, we have an opportunity now to obey the gospel. If you are here and you're a Christian who is strayed away, and you've sinned, you've wronged your brother or sister. See, the principle is, is what we do to each other in the church. How we need to make sure that we're not doing anything that's contradicting our Christianity or contradicting our relationship with one with another. And, and most important, our relationship in Christ Jesus. Therefore, repent of your sins and together we stand and sing with you. Pray. Oh, I leave you in the words of Paul.
His expression that he wrote over in Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. He said, Now I plead you, brothers, mm -hmm. by the name of Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. Amen. And that there be no division among you, but that you be perfectly joined together mm -hmm. in the same mind and in the same judgment. Amen. That's the call that we have been charged to do. Amen. To be of the same mind and of the same judgment. Amen. And we are the same mind and of the same judgment. We don't have to go and stand before unjust court. Amen. 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 Amen.